Resident Evil, a series that, without a doubt, defines so many traits of survival horror video games. But you might be surprised to learn of the origins of this remarkable series. Today I want to talk about what led to the existence of Resident Evil, a horror game on the Famicom called Sweet Home. Sweet Home was also a Japanese horror film released in 1989, directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa and produced by Juzo Itami. The movie focused on a film crew who enters the mansion of a famous painter in order to film a documentary on the artist and his fresco paintings. While this crew means well, their presence isn't exactly welcome in the abandoned mansion. The mansion had a particularly dark past, as the artist's toddler-aged son had accidentally fallen into an incinerator, leading to his tragic death. The artist's wife was devastated by the death, and her angry ghost continued to haunt the mansion. This of course did not bode well for the film crew, with the group struggling to escape with their lives. This might seem like a run-of-the-mill horror film, and in many ways it was, but there was a major aspect of the film that set it apart from most. It was to be accompanied by a video game. Video game adaptations of films, while very common today, weren't quite as common then, and unfortunately there aren't many known for being of good quality. The game adaptation of Sweet Home, however, was being developed by a company with a stellar reputation, Capcom. In fact, the game was being developed by Takuro Fujiwara, the same man I mentioned in my earlier video on Tamba and Whoopi Camp. The game had the blessing of the creators of the film, with the development team having full creative freedom to change aspects of the film to fit the medium better. So the team set to work to make a game that would capture the essence of the movie, while also working as a fantastic game in its own right. What was interesting about Sweet Home was that both the film and the game were advertised together. They were intended to be marketed as one, with both the film and the game supplementing each other. I haven't found any definitive information on if one was planned before the other, but it seems like it was decided early on that the two would be closely tied together, more so than your typical licensed game and movie. The role-playing game adaptation of Sweet Home was met with plenty of praise upon its release later that year. In fact, the game was considered by many to be even better than its source material. But what made the game so good? Let's take a look at what the game's all about. Sweet Home maintains mostly the same plot as the film, with a few minor details changed, such as expanding on some of the pasts of the characters. The main characters are the same as the film, consisting of Kazuo, the producer, Emi, Kazuo's daughter, Taguchi, the cameraman, Akiko, who supplies first aid and is the love interest of Kazuo, and Asuka, the art restorer. Additionally, you can change the name of each character, which is a pretty typical characteristic of RPGs. Each character holds an item unique to them, with Kazuo holding a lighter, which can be used to burn objects and as a weapon in battle, Taguchi holding a camera, which can be used to document the frescoes and discover the clues that they hide, Akiko has the first aid kit, which can heal the other characters from certain conditions, Asuka has a vacuum that can clean up certain obstacles and frescoes, and Amy has a key that can unlock various doors around the mansion. There are also items that can be picked up and used in battle or as a replacement in case of the death of a character. And let me say, I was shocked by the character deaths in this game. When your character dies, they really die. They aren't on commission until you're able to heal them somehow, they're really dead. And the game makes sure you know it. Permadeaths have been seen in games, but typically not in RPGs, especially earlier ones like this. This makes managing your inventory and keeping characters alive very important. Another aspect of the game I was particularly impressed by was how genuinely modern it felt. I mean, sure, this is a Famicom game and it shows, but the puzzle solving and overall gameplay feels very innovative. There really wasn't a game that played like Sweet Home, and that, in a sea of platformers and adventure games, really stood out. Sweet Home was never officially brought over to the West. This was most likely due to Nintendo having strict censorship policies outside of Japan. Sweet Home was definitely not a game that would fit those guidelines unless it was heavily modified, due to its extreme graphic violence and somber, disturbing plot. However, there have been two major English fan translations, the first being created by Gaijin Productions and Suicidal Translations, initially released in 2000. This was released around the same time as the first big fan translations in the late 90s and early 2000s. While it's a great translation all around, there are some issues with accuracy and clarity. A lot of the issues make it difficult to play without some kind of outside help. The second fan translation was created by The Siege, and fixed a lot of the issues the first translation had. Things seem to be a lot more accurate to the movie from my experience, and it's much easier to understand what you're doing. By the time 1993 had rolled around, Takura Fujiwara had suggested a remake of Sweet Home. Fujiwara was disappointed with the graphical capabilities of the Famicom when Sweet Home was being developed, especially after working primarily on arcade titles, so he felt that it was a good time to remake the game with more advanced technology. 
Capcom soon realized that they had lost the license to Sweet Home, and thus, the remake was no more. But instead of giving up on the remake entirely, they decided to take the aspects that defined Sweet Home and transfer them to a new IP. That project became Biohazard, known in the West as Resident Evil. After playing Sweet Home, I couldn't help but notice the numerous similarities between the two games. From the mansion setting, door opening sequences, puzzle solving, and inventory management, it's easy to see how Resident Evil is a true spiritual successor to Sweet Home. So next time you play a Resident Evil or survival horror game, remember that you have Sweet Home to think. If you like, give it a try. It truly established the survival horror genre. If it wasn't for its release, I believe we wouldn't have so many of the amazing games that we have today. I would like to thank my friend Cody for suggesting that I cover Sweet Home here on the channel. It's been a blast and I would love to cover it more in the future. If you're interested in suggesting a game or gaming device for me to look at, feel free to let me know in the comments or contact me on Twitter. You might just see it discussed here. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.